Welcome everyone. My name is Shruti Bist. I'm a senior technical program manager at VMware. I help drive inner so strategic initiative across the company and lead the program outreach and uh, project onboarding to the NSOS program. Today in my inner source story, I'll share how inner source program office at VMware used the design thinking approach to solve the problem of code discoverability and build collaboration mindset and tools. But before I start sharing how we use the design thinking approach, I want to start by warming up with the basics of design thinking for those who don't know about it. At least for once, I always thought it was only meant for product designers. So the definition, as per the Interaction Design Foundation, design thinking is a non-linear interactive process that teams use to understand users. They challenge assumptions, redefine problem, and create innovative solution to prototype and test. Or you can also think design thinking as a creative way to solve user problems by looking at the bigger picture and allowing your users to articulate their problems, needs, and pain points. So we know it's a creative way to solve user problems, but what's involved in it? Design thinking is based on five foundational pillars that I show here, empathizing with your users. It's almost difficult to help someone if you don't know them. That is why this approach with, begins with understanding and identifying with your users, defining their goals, their user needs and pain point ideating to brainstorm creative solutions and validating assumptions you set at the beginning of the study. Building a prototype to validate your learnings based on user insights. And finally, you test. You test what you built with the users to see if it fulfilled their needs. So this picture here, the design squiggle by Damien Newman, summarized this process in a very impressive manner. This is a very powerful representation showcasing the power of the process where you begin with the uncertainty, patterns and insight and slowly converge towards greater clarity and focus and also a prototype to test. So now that we know what is design thinking, I'll explain why we apply this approach to inner source at VMware. A little background about inner source at VMware. Uh, we started as a group of inner source enthusiasts, early adopters and learners. The program office was formed with a dedicated team and also joined our inner source visionaries, also known as technical oversight board members from different business units. The program was officially rolled out within the company at an internal conference last year with a mission to improve collaboration at VMware. Um, prior to its launch, InnerSource existed within different pockets of the company without people knowing or calling it InnerSource. As we begin understanding some collaboration scenarios and patterns within the company, we realized collaboration at the company of the size was not an easy task. There were several source code management tools, several thousand code repos, an enormous amount of data stored in multiple places. Finding that information was difficult buried in multiple places, almost felt to us it was not meant to be found. Before we could actually improve anything, we needed to know how people and teams collaborated and how they found the information to collaborate, the project information, the source code, or even the project maintainers, what was working for them, what was not, and what was that the users wanted. We had answers to none, but we definitely had some assumptions to validate. So to find out, we took inspiration from the design thinking approach that I explained earlier. Before solving the problem of cross-team collaboration and code discoverability, we wanted to empathize with our users, with the R&D community. We wanted to define their needs in a problem statement and then validate our assumptions. Over a month period, we interviewed several stakeholders across multiple geographies and business units in various roles. We asked them about their motivation for searching project and code within the company, how they search for that information today, learning about their pain points. We asked them their encounters with not being able to search for information they were looking. And also we asked them the improvements that they may suggest to make it successful. More importantly, how does an inclusive project portal impact stakeholders? 
and what moves the needle for successful cross PU collaboration for them. So what did we find? By conducting this case study, we found that the community searched for project information to learn and reuse what was available rather than building duplicate solutions. People had the right intent to collaborate. Almost everyone we interviewed said they, they wanted to collaborate, but finding information was difficult, which validated our assumption. The overall sentiment of the R&D community over finding source code or project artifact was frustrating and time consuming. The case study findings and user insight helped us to converge towards some definitive outcomes. So let's talk about those in the next slides. First, we were able to brainstorm user insights that we gathered into user scenarios, personas, and user stories. We produced the InnerSource portal project requirements document based on these findings. Over a six month period, InnerSource program office released a minimum viable product in form of the InnerSource portal to test users insight that we gathered based on the study. A year later, after multiple iterations and users feedback, we have 100 plus repos across the company listed on the InnerSource portal today to encourage cross team collaboration. To make searching for information as easy as it can get, we integrated the InnerSource portal with the company internal websites. And to be inclusive and keep scaling project submission, we launched self-service onboarding, allowing users to self onboard their projects within few minutes via the InnerSource portal. We have applied the design thinking approach, not just once, not just twice, but multiple times since the program started to find answers to some complex problem related to people, process, and tools impacting inner source. It has helped us immensely to determine how a discovery portal was critical for the program success, incentivizing and motivating teams for cross team collaboration and leadership roles in supporting the cause. Design thinking also helped us to identify the challenges to inner source in terms of conflicting BU priorities and where leadership can smoothen the path to collaboration. Finally, it has helped us to understand what's in it for anyone interested in inner source. As I wrap up today, I want to leave you with some key takeaways of where you can apply design thinking to the inner source scenarios within your company. It is especially helpful for those who are just starting with inner source within the organization and don't know how to get started. That's something I see all the time on the Slack channel, on our inner source Slack channel. If you don't know the collaboration culture at your company, you can use design thinking to find answers. You can also use this methodology to understand how leadership and sponsors within your company can help teams to succeed. Or perhaps uh, to understand what will move the needle for decision makers, managers, directors at your company to promote cross team collaboration. Lastly, I want to end this talk by saying that remember, design thinking is not just for product designers. That's what I thought initially. It is for everyone and can be applied in multiple scenarios, especially when you're trying to establish inner source program within your organization. That'll be it for from me. Thank you, everyone.